Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the Layman's channel. Uh, my name's Martin and um, on this channel you'll find uh, various different things. We've got a couple of playlists of songs, uh, one original song uh, that I've written with uh, some friends of mine uh, and also um, some songs that we do in English and Tagalog, some cover songs. Um, but the, ma the majority of the content on this channel will be Bible study uh, as done from a layman's perspective. Um, and I hope that you find that uh, the subject matter on this uh, on this channel will be uh, piquing your interest and not just piquing your interest but also speaking to your hearts and souls. So before we get into today's Bible study, um, let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for the power of your word. At your word, Lord God, the whole of creation was created. Everything, Lord God, that is visible and invisible was created by you, just with a word, let there be. And Lord, we want to thank you that your word that we read is truth. Thank you, Lord God, that the entrance of your word brings light and understanding. And that, Lord God, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our paths. And I pray, Lord God, that today as we look at your word, that you would speak to us spirit to spirit. That, Lord God, this wouldn't just be an intellectual um, endeavor Lord God which tickles our ears and uh, blesses our intellects but Lord that it may bless our hearts and Lord once again I come before you and thank you for the great and precious promises that you have given me to anoint my lips to enhance the kingdom of God and to flow through me as a conduit so Lord do those things I pray today not for my glory but for your glory and for your glory alone and in Jesus name I pray amen um, well, we've almost come to the end of our studies into the times in the Gospels when Jesus said the words, I am. Uh, next week, I think, is going to be the last of the series. Um, and I do hope and pray that these have been of benefit to you in your individual walks with the Lord. And that you have been um, challenged to take a deeper look into God's word for yourself. It's important that each of us gets a grasp on what God is saying, especially in these last days. Um, There's so many different facets to the message that God has entrusted to us. And each of us has been given not just an opportunity to go deeper, but a responsibility to do it as well. 
So don't rely on people like me or other YouTubers. Uh, don't rely even on your pastors or the books that you read. Get in for the word of God for yourself. It's the most important thing that you can do. Um, last time, uh, we looked at Jesus saying the words, I am willing. And we explored the specific word the writers used in their description of Jesus' desire or his being willing to do something. I stressed that in the 230 times that this Greek word is used in the New Testament, it is only used four times in conjunction with the willingness of Jesus to do something. We learned that Jesus is willing to touch the untouchable and to heal them of their diseases. We also understood that the willingness of Jesus to do the Father's will, no matter the cost, made for us a way where we too can experience his healing touch. For it is written that by his stripes we were healed. And because Jesus was willing to submit to the Father's will, it also means that we can experience the fullness of life that he died to bring us. For he willingly gave his life to bring us life. And finally, we saw that the ultimate aim of Jesus is his desire and willingness to bring all who believe in him into his presence for eternity. Uh, this week, I'm going to be focusing on the confrontation that Jesus had in uh, the book of John, chapter 8 and verses 12 through to 59. Now, this is a huge portion of scripture to look at, but it's important that we read it all to get the context of just who Jesus was speaking with before he got to the phrase when he said, I am. So um, if you've got your Bibles, then uh, let's read together from John chapter 8 verses 12 uh, to 59. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The Pharisees challenged him. Here you are appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid, for I know where I came from and where I'm going. But you've no idea where I came from or where I'm going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment upon no one. But if I do judge, my decisions are right because I'm not alone. I stand with the father who sent me. In your own law, it's written that the testimony of two men is valid. I am one who testifies for myself and my other witness is the father who sent me. Then they asked him, where's your father? You don't meet, know me or my father, Jesus replied. If you knew me, you'd know that my, you'd know my father also. He spoke these words while teaching in the temple area near the place where the offerings were put. Yet no one seized him because his time had not yet come. Once more, Jesus said to them, I'm going away and you will look for me, and you will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. This made the Jews ask, will he kill himself? Is that why he says, where I go, you can't come? But he continued, you are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins if you do not believe that I am the one I claim to be. You will indeed die in your sins. Who are you? They asked. Just what I've been claiming all along, Jesus replied. I have much to, t to say in judgment of you, but he who sent me is reliable. 
and what I have heard from him, I tell the world. They didn't understand that he was telling them about his father. So Jesus said, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am the one I claim to be, and that I do nothing on my own but speak just what the Father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He's not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. And even as he spoke, many put their faith in him. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants, and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you're Abraham's descendants, yet you're ready to kill me. Because you have no room for my word. I am telling you what I've seen in the Father's presence, and you do what you have heard from your father. Abraham is our father, they answered. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do the things Abraham did. As it is, you are determined to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did no such things. You are doing the things your own father does. We're not illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God and now am here. I haven't come on my own, but he sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there's no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he's a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell the truth, you don't believe me. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I'm telling the truth, why don't you believe me? He who belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you don't belong to God. The Jews answered him, Aren't we right in saying that you are a Samaritan and demon-possessed? <laughs> I'm not possessed by a demon, Jesus said, but I honour my father and you dishonour me. I'm not seeking glory for myself, but there is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. I tell you the truth. If anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. At this the Jews exclaimed, Now we know that you're demon-possessed. Abraham died, and so did the prophets, yet you say that if anyone keeps your word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham? He died, and so did the prophets. Who do you think you are? Jesus replied, If I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My father, whom you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me. Though you don't know him, I know him. If I said I didn't, I'd be a liar like you, but I do know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. You're not yet 50 years old, the Jews said to him, and you've seen Abraham? I tell you the truth, Jesus answered. 
before Abraham was born, I am. At this they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his wonderful word. So, in this passage of scripture, I want you to notice the different people groups that Jesus was conversing with. First of all, he's talking to all the people there. Verse 12 says, when Jesus spoke again to the people. In verse 13, his attention turns towards the Pharisees. For we, re we read that it was the Pharisees that challenged him. In verses 21 to 29, he's having a chat with the Jews. And because of the words he's saying to them, we read in verse 30 that even as he spoke, many believed in him. I want you to bear that in mind because suddenly the focus is changed again in verse 31 when Jesus turns his attention upon the Jews who had believed him in him. We see from this point that Jesus is challenging their belief in him. Finally, in this passage, notice that the author changes the audience Jesus is speaking to again from verse 48, which starts, the Jews answered him. The question I'd like to ask is, are these the same Jews who believed in him? Are these the same Jews? What's happening here? What is Jesus doing? Um, this is my opinion. But I believe he's making absolutely sure that those who believed in him got the message as to who he really was. In effect, he was sorting out the wheat from the chaff. And that immediately happened when he said the immortal words in verse 58. Before Abraham was born, I am. Those who had their preconceptions challenged and their own beliefs questioned got seriously offended by those words and wanted to stone him on the spot for blasphemy and they believed that they were perfectly within their rights to do so for the law was unequivocally un sorry unequivocally clear about the punishment for a blasphemer blasphemer leviticus 24 verses 15 to 16 says Anyone who curses their God will be held responsible. Anyone who blasphemes the name of the Lord is to be put to death. The entire assembly must stone them. Whether foreigner or native born, when they blaspheme the name, they are to be put to death. When they blaspheme the name, they are to be put to death. But... Was Jesus here in this sentence claiming to be the I am of Exodus chapter 3? I must admit here that both the Greek language and the Hebrew translation of the Greek words are a bit fuzzy in their translations of the words of Jesus when he said, I am. The Greek words are ego aimi, which literally translates as I exist. Now that works, I suppose. Before Abraham was born, I exist. The Hebrew New Testament says anihu, which translates as I am he. To be honest, that kind of language isn't going to provoke anyone to pick up a stone. With that in mind, I think that we need to remember that Jesus spoke Aramaic, a close relation to the Hebrew language, which evolved from Israel's neighbour, Syria. That means we're going to have to make some assumptions 
And I'm not too worried that we have to do that either. Why? Because of the reaction to the Jews after he said those words. In my 36 years on the road with Christ, throughout all the ups and downs, all the doubts, all the troubles, all the difficulties. I have always assumed that when Jesus spoke the words, I am, he was repeating the words God spoke to Moses out of the burning bush in Exodus chapter 3 in verses 13 to 14. And in that passage we read this, Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what's his name? Then what shall I tell them? God says to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you ask to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. In other words, I believe that in that passage, in that sentence, Jesus spoke the forbidden and the unspeakable. Those of you who study the word properly for yourselves or listen and watch better and more qualified Bible scholars than me, understand that the name God calls himself in Exodus chapter three is called the Tetragrammaton. It's the Hebrew word spelt Y-H-W-H. In Hebrew, and I'll put the letters up down below, it is. Remember that Hebrew is the language that is written and read from right to left. This word is so sacred and holy that Jews to this day refuse to say it. In fact, they don't even know how to pronounce it. You should be aware that in the Hebrew language, there are no vowel sounds. No A's, no E's, no I's, no O's, no U's. You could guess it, but you'd have a one in 100,000 chance of getting it right. Bearing that in mind, a number of reliable Bible scholars suggest that to pronounce the word, it's best if you just stick to the sound of the Hebrew letters. So you have the letter below, which is pronounced Yud, the letter below pronounced hey, the letter below which is pronounced vav, and back to the hey. Joining them together we have the word yud hey, vav hey. I'm not sure if that's correct, but I must admit it does sound good on the tongue, yud hey, vav hey. So what do the Jews call God? if they either can't or don't want to say his name out of fear. They call him Hashem, which literally means the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord translates Baruch Hashem and Baruch Haba Bashem Adonai translates as blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And those are the very words the crowd shouted when Jesus entered Jerusalem in Matthew 21 and verse 9. And the words to the beautiful song I sang at the start of this, vine at, at the start of this video. But the Jews also used more descriptive names to call gods. Names such as Adonai, El Shaddai, El Olam, El Roy. In our English Bibles, the name YHWH is written down as Lord. When you see the word Lord in capitals in your Bibles, then that word is translated from the original word YHWH or Yudhe Vavhe. Modern day Ju Judaism has also permuted, altered, and rearranged the name Yudhe Vavhe into three separate words to help them avoid saying the sacred name. I find it very interesting that what they don't understand as yet is that they use words that are also associated with their Messiah in the New Testament. Those words are Haya, Hove, and Eheya. 
Haye means he was, Hove means he is, and Aheya means he will be. I can hear the words Jesus spoke to the Apostle John in Revelation 1.8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Let's get back to that sentence Jesus spoke to the Jews in John 8, 58. Very truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. I don't want to put words into the mouth of the Messiah, but with all that we have learned so far about the name of God in this video, you could say that Jesus said, before Abraham was born, yud heh vav -Hey. Or, before Abraham was born, haya hove eheya I am, I was, and I will be. That's what I believed happened in Jesus' confrontation with the Jews here. As a result, and because of those words, because of that name that he said, the Jews wanted to pick up stones and kill him. And a couple of chapters later in John chapter 10 and verses 30 to 33, they tried to stone him again, because we read that Jesus said, I and the Father are one. And again, his Jewish opponents picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? We're not stoning you for any good work, they replied, but for blasphemy. Because you, a mere man, claimed to be God. yud hey vav -Hey. I believe that what Jesus is saying about himself in John chapter 8 and verse 58 when he said, I am, is that he is the same God that spoke to Abraham in Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3, where we read, yud heh vav -Hey said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you I will curse and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. And I also believe that he is the same God that spoke with Moses from the burning bush when he said those words, I am who I am. This is what you are say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. Jesus is the I am. Jesus is the name. yud heh vav Obviously, today hasn't been an exhaustive look into God's name, but I hope that it's been enough to pique your interest into looking further and going deeper for yourselves. I've put some scripture references and some links to other YouTube channels which have helped me get a grasp on this subject in the description below. Hopefully, they'll be of use to you too. I'd like to finish up today by quoting part of the prayer Jesus made for all believers in John chapter 17. O righteous Father, the, word, the world has not known you, but I have known you. And these have known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name. I have declared to them your name and will declare it, that the love with which you loved me may be in them, and I in them. May the great yud heh vav -Hey bless you abundantly 
more than you could possibly ask or imagine as you think about and dwell upon his name. I am. May God bless you. See you next time. Amen.